Good day, Math E21 class. So today we'll be uh, tackling the electrical properties for materials. So the electrical property is basically the response of a material to an applied electric field. So usually, ang electrical properties natin is whether conducting or insulating ang ating material. So first, let's look at electrical conduction. For electrical conduction, it is governed by the physical law known as Ohm's law. Yung Ohm's law natin, this is sa physics, V is equal to IR. Yung resistivity natin from this statement can be obtained from your resistance, where resistivity is equal to resistance times the area, the cross-sectional area of your material, over the length in which your material is conducting electricity at. So, alam niyo na yan from your physics 72 or 71? 71. I think physics 71. So, for conduction, electrical conduction is the movement of electrically charged particles through a transmission medium. So, note here, ang sinabi natin is electrically charged particles since hindi lang naman electrons ang nagogovern ng conduction mo. As long as may charge ka at gumagalaw siya, you would say that that material might be experiencing electrical conduction. So for electrical conductivity, it is represented by sigma, which is equal to 1 over your resistivity. So conductivity has the units uh, ohms, meter, raised to the negative 1. And from this representation, we can express our ohms law as J is equal to sigma E where J is your current density, that is your current over the cross-sectional area, and E is the electrical field or voltage over the length of your specimen. This is actually the correct or the first. Ito yung pre-post ni Ohm na talagang law na Ohm's law. Yung V is equal to IR natin is just a consequence of J is equal to sigma E. So looking at this image, we can see the conductivities of our different materials. We can see here that your metals and alloys, or your metals, usually have the best conduction. Meanwhile, for your ceramics and your polymers, they are rather good insulators because hindi sila maganding magconduct ng electricity. So as a material class, your metals are usually the most electrically conducting. And we can... And this phenomena can be explained by the type of conduction that each of these materials have. So there are two different types of conduction. You have your electronic and ionic conduction. For electronic conduction, this happens through the movement of our electrons or of our free electrons in our material. Meanwhile, for ionic conduction, this happens through the movement of either positive or negative ions in our system. For materials to be a conductor, there should be a free movement of a charge carrier. In most materials, that charge carrier happens to be our electrons. So we have what we call your electronic band structure. The electronic band structure gives you the allowable energy levels for which your electrons can take in a solid. So in crystals, the interaction between multiple atoms gives rise to multiple allowable energy states in which your electron can assume. Given enough atoms, we can then form what we call energy bands. Your energy bands natin is allowable energies which your electrons can take. So your energy bands natin is ito, ito, and ito. So ibig sabihin yan, your electron can assume your energies na to, ito, and nandito. And bawal siya sa energies na nasa gitna ng energy bands mo. Again, electrons cannot assume energies in the energy band gap. So these energy bands are important since your electrons need to be promoted from one from their base energy to a higher energy for them to participate in conduction. So we're essentially promoting electrons from its ground state to a higher energy state for them to become free electrons. So depending on the band structure of your material, so depending on the band structures of your materials, this would actually predict 
whether your material would be a conductor or an insulator. So first, let's define what we call our Fermi energy. Yung Fermi energy natin, this is the energy that corresponds to the highest field electron state at 0 Kelvin. Basically, ito yung energy, ito yung pinakamataas na energy na ino-occupy ni electron at 0 Kelvin. So yung Fermi energy natin is ito, 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 or somewhere here, and dito. So this Fermi energy, this just tells you the demarcation between your filled states and your empty states. Filled band, empty band, solution. So since free electrons are really important in electronic conduction, how then do we create our free electrons? So the creation of free electrons happen by supplying energy to your electrons to make it increase in its energy level. So this can be done through light or through thermal energy. So depending on how easy it is to promote an electron from one lower energy state to a higher energy state dictates whether or not your material will become a conductor or an insulator. So again, this is predicted by your band structures and shown here are the band structures of three different classes of materials. You have your conductor, semiconductor, and insulator. So recall, sa band structure natin, you have your energy bands and your band gaps. So depending on the location of your Fermi energy, this gives you uh, an idea in which kung saan yung electron na pinakamadaling ma-promote to a higher energy state. So for metals or for conductors, your Fermi energy lies within your energy band. So yung lowest energy ng electron mo is within here. And para itaas ng energy level yung electron mo, maliit na energy lang yung kailangan na itaas natin. Meanwhile, for semiconductors and insulators, we have what we call band gaps here and here. So, itong band gap na to, kailangan mo mag-supply ng enough energy dito and dito such that makakatawid yung electron mo from here up to here. Kasi bawal si electron na nasa gitna lang siya. Hindi siya aakit niyan. Kailangan mo ma-overcome to gap na ito. This makes making free electrons in these kinds of materials very hard. Lowering the population of free electrons in your material, essentially lowering the conductivity of that material. So now let's look at our different material classes. So for metals, the band structure of metals looks something like this. Yung band structure ng metals mo, makita natin that the filled states, filled states and the empty states are enclosed within one energy band. This makes it easy for your electron to be promoted to a higher energy state since hindi ganun kataas na energy ang kailangan mo input to your electron to promote it such that magiging free electron siya capable of participating in conduction. So for semiconductors and insulators, the band structure looks something like this. So we have what we call your valence band and conduction band. So the valence band is the highest energy band that is fully filled with electrons. Your conduction band is the lowest energy band that has empty states. And in between these two bands is what we call your band gap. So to create free electrons in a band structure that looks something like this, the electron at the highest filled state must overcome your band gap to go into the lowest empty state. Ito yung minimum energy requirement para magkaroon tayo ng free electron in your system. And as you can notice, mas malaki yung energy na kailangan na to para ma-promote yung electron natin than in your traditional conductors. And due to this energy requirement, 
mas mahirap tayong gumawa ng free electrons. So, free electrons are harder to create when there's a band gap, which minimizes the population of free electrons available for electronic conduction, lowers the conductivity of your materials, thus making semiconductors or in very large band gaps insulators. So for your metals, at room temperature, they have a lot of free electrons. Since their band structure allows them to have a lot of free electrons. So there are two different factors that affect the electronic conductivity of your materials. One is the number of free electrons in your material and second is the electron mobility of your material. So here, the electron mobility is represented by mu. Meanwhile, the number of free electrons is n. Yung e natin dito, this is your electronic charge or the charge of one electron. So this is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Your electron mobility, this is affected by the presence of scattering centers in your material. So these scattering centers is are affected by temperature, plastic deformation in your materials, and impurities in your materials. So increasing the following factors, increasing temperature, plastic deformation, and impurities in your materials would make it harder for your electrons to move within your materials, lowering the electron mobility and thus lowering the conductivity of your material. Now let's tackle our semiconductors. So semiconductors can be classified whether elemental sila, so like silicon or germanium, or there are compound semiconductors like gallium arsenide or indium phosphide. So usually in semiconductors natin, this occupy yung group 4 elements natin. Kaya meron tayong silicon and germanium or compounds between your 3 and 5 or 2, 6 elements. So semiconductors, this can also be classified whether they are intrinsic. So pag intrinsic ang semiconductor mo, it is natural. The number of electrons is equal to the number of holes or extrinsic siya, which is enhanced by impurities. In this case, the number of electrons is not equal to the number of holes. So you might be asking, ano ba tong holes na ito? So a hole is created when an electron is excited onto the conduction band. Pag tumaas yung electron mo from the valence band, from the valence band to the conduction band, tumaas siya from here to here, a vacant energy state is left in this valence band. And this vacant energy state is what we call our hole. We can think of our hole as a positively charged particle that is also capable of conduction. So parang ang nangyayari, pag yung electron mo moves on one way, it's like your hole is moving in the opposite direction. So for intrinsic semiconductors, due to its structure, all your electrons are usually used in bonding. So this means that there is not enough free electrons that it would be conducting by itself. In this form, let's say silicon. Silicon is a semiconductor. Silicon in this form is a good insulator. To make this more useful for conducting electricity, we have to do something else. That something else is doping. Doping is the addition of impurities of another element to your semiconductor, so most commonly silicon, to change its conductivity. So these dopants makes it easier for our charge carriers to flow. So almost all commercial semiconductors used in our devices are extrinsic in nature, meaning dinope natin sila. So your extrinsic semiconductors may be classified depending on the type of dopants that we use. It could be either P-type or N-type. If P-type yung semiconductor mo, for silicon, we usually add group 3 elements. 
or elements containing missing electrons. This makes it such that your electrons would be less than the number of holes in your structure. Meanwhile, for n-type semiconductors, we add elements that contain extra electrons. So these are usually your group 5 elements. Ito siya. Which increases the population of electrons more than your holes. So in extrinsic p-type semiconductors, we add elements that have less electrons than its host. So in this case, we have boron in silicon. So boron has three electrons compared to silicon's four valence electrons. So pag inagay mo si boron in silicon, makita natin that meron tayong isang electron na kulang dito. So this would arise to the creation of a hole. Upon exposure to an applied electric field, here, yung hole natin na nanggaling mula dito, mag-move siya dito. So dahil nag-move yung hole na yun, nagkaroon tayo ng movement of a positively charged particles, conduction then happens. Meanwhile, for an extrinsic n-type semiconductor, we're adding a element that has more electrons than your host. So in here, we have phosphorus in silicon. Phosphorus have 5 electrons. Meanwhile, silicon has 4 valence electrons. So dahil sa addition ng phosphorus mo, which has 1 extra valence electron than your silicon, you now produce your free electron that is free to move about in your structure. So when we apply an external electric field, your electron will move to the opposite direction to that electric field. So mula dito, gagalaw siya, pupunta dito. And thus, magkakaroon ka ng movement of charges leading to conduction. The addition of low bands into our semiconductors actually changes the electronic band structure of your material. So shown here is the intrinsic band structure of the semiconductor. So if we add dopants into our system, we're essentially creating extra energy levels inside your band gap. So for n-type semiconductors, we can see that the addition of a donor atom or a donor dopant creates an energy level near your conduction band. So dito, you're inputting an extra electron near the bottom of the conduction band, which makes it easier to create free electrons. For your p-type semiconductors, we're adding an extra empty state near the top of the valence band, which makes it easier for electrons in the valence band to move up to an empty state, allowing the creation of free electrons for conduction. Insulators, meanwhile, have almost the same structure as your intrinsic semiconductors. Dito lang, mas malaki na yung band gap nila. So due to this, their band structure does not allow the efficient creation of free electrons at room temperature, which makes them well, insulating. So this usually happens for most ceramics and polymers. Do do take note that not all ceramics and polymers are insulating. There are special cases like in graphite in which so graphite is a ceramic material but it is one of the best electronic conductors that we have. So this has something to do with its structure which hopefully will be discussed to you in a higher math class. So now let's look at ionic conduction. So ionic conduction is a less important form of conduction in materials since yung contribution of the conduction is usually much lower than electronic conduction. In ionic conduction, the conduction happens through the movement of charged ions. So your charge carriers as either your anions or your cations. 
Another important electric property of your material is what we call your dielectric behavior. So the dielectric behavior describes the ability of insulators to store charges when under an electric field. And this is usually measured by capacitance. Capacitance is equal to Q over V, where Q is the charge, while over V, which is the voltage in which we're applying to your material. For a parallel plate capacitor, the capacitance is equal to epsilon A over D, where A is the area of the parallel plates and D is the distance between these two plates. Epsilon, meanwhile, is the permittivity of the material. This is basically the quantity that gives you the dielectric behavior of your material. So, pag mas mataas yung permittivity ng material mo, essentially, mas maganda siyang mag-hold ng charges. By convention, we have what we call your relative permittivity. Yung relative permittivity natin, this is just the permittivity of the material, epsilon, over epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of vacuum. So, para maging mas madali lang yung handling natin ng permittivity natin. So, this relative permittivity this is also known as your dielectric constant. So, this essentially tells you kung gano'ng kagandang dielectric yung material mo. So, this just shows the dielectric constants of different materials. So, vacuum has a dielectric constant of 1. So, vacuum yung pinakamaliit natin na dielectric constant. And depending on the material, pwede siya maging poor or very good dielectric. So the mechanism of dielectric behavior in your materials happen through dielectric polarization. So let's take two parallel plates in a parallel plate capacitor. So pag walang anything in between these two parallel plates, meron lang tayong certain amount of charges stored in the surface of the parallel plates. If we input a dielectric material in between our two parallel plates as shown here, we can see na mag -i increase there would be an increase in the amount of charges stored in between the parallel plates. And this is due to your dielectric here. In the presence of an electric field, what happens is the charges in between your elect in between your in the material aligns so nagkakaroon tayo ng net kakaroon tayo ng net charges on the surface of your dielectric material these net charges then extracts more charges in the parallel plates leading to higher stored charges in between that parallel plate increasing the capacitance of that system. So there are two different types of polarization. First, you have your electronic polarization. In electronic polarization, naga align yung electron clouds natin with the electric field. So there's a change in the shape of the electron clouds due to the external electric field, which leads to the increase in the amount of stored charges. So we also have your ionic na dielectric behavior. So this happens when your crystal is exposed to an applied external electric field. Madidisplace ng konti yung cations and anions po from its original position. And this would lead to the dielectric behavior of that material. So in materials, to increase the dielectric behavior of your materials, we prefer to have an ionic na dielectric behavior. So to increase the performance of your dielectric materials, we usually look at materials which have an asymmetric charge arrangement. Ibig sabihin, yung position ng cations and anions natin is medyo varied such that pag naglagay tayo ng let's say, an applied external field in your material, 
yung movement or displacement between your cations and anions are pronounced, which leads to high polarization in your material, increasing the capacitance of that material. So our capacitors are important since we need this in applications when we need a sudden surge of electricity. So example nyan is your camera flashes and in some circuit board elements. With that, we are done with this module. So hopefully you all are having a wonderful time. Hopefully. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.